Here are the top stories for today, May 28, 2020. The Philippines and Vietnam reaffirm their commitment to pursue peace and stability in the South China Sea. The DILG urges local government units to allow returning overseas Filipino workers to undergo home quarantine. A male dialysis patient becomes the first COVID-19 positive case in Basilan. And Cebu City reports a record high number of 16 COVID-19 recoveries in one day. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The Philippines and Vietnam reaffirmed their shared commitment to pursue peace, security, and stability in the South China Sea. In a telephone conversation Tuesday evening, President Rodrigo Duterte and Vietnam Prime Minister Nguyen Quan Phuc expressed and emphasized the key roles played by both countries in promoting security and stability in the South China Sea. Citing the Philippines as an important member of the ASEAN, Buck said the Philippines has played well the role of country coordinator of ASEAN-China relations. The Philippines is actively pushing for the conclusion of a binding, effective, and substantive code of conduct in the South China Sea at the soonest possible time. Duterte said the Philippines is ready to support the endeavors of ASEAN. President Rodrigo Duterte on Tuesday congratulated the military for their unwavering love in our country. In a meeting with officers of the Philippine Army and Philippine Air Force, Duterte said the country's military forces do not work for money, but they serve because of love of country. Duterte's expression of gratitude came after government troops successfully conducted military operations in northern Luzon and Mindanao. He ordered the military and the police to neutralize the insurgents because of their continuous attacks on government forces amid the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm not paying you. I know that you are not mercenaries. You do not do it for money. You do it out of passion for the love of country. Because we are all Filipinos. I'm not trying to really pull my own chair, but... For all yung, na, yung mga sundalo, pati police na nabihag ng, ng except uh, si yung general, lahat yan ako ang kumukuha, pati si Bo. So, I believe ako, saludo ako yung ginawa ninyo. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año on Wednesday welcomed the recommendation of the Metro Manila Council to place the metropolis under general community quarantine in June. On Monday, Año said the government plans to implement a barangay-based lockdown after the lapse of the modified enhanced community quarantine in Metro Manila on May 31st. He said villages with a high incidence of COVID-19 could be placed under lockdown while those with no cases could ease the restrictions on their residents' movement and open some business establishments. Only random checkpoints will be in place under the GCQ to ease traffic congestion as more people are expected to return to work. In a meeting on Tuesday, all 17 mayors of Metro Manila unanimously approved the recommendation to place the area under GCQ on June 1st as they saw the need to reopen the economy for more industries. Año, however, said President Duterte has the final word on the matter. Medical frontliners are exempted from number coding beginning June 1st. And the LRTA conducted a simulation exercise as part of its preparations. More on these from Marita Moahe. Medical frontliners in Metro Manila will be exempted from the modified number coding scheme beginning June 1. The modified number coding was among the policies discussed and recommended by the Metro Manila Council, led by the MMDA and made up of 17 Metro Manila mayors once the metropolis is eased into a general community quarantine. They also agreed to recommend the easing of restrictions in the metropolis from the current MECQ to GCQ beginning June 1. Lockdowns in certain barangays or areas with several COVID-19 cases and resumption of rail lines and point-to-point -point buses. 
Meanwhile, the Light Rail Transit Authority on Tuesday conducted a simulation exercise as part of its preparation for the resumption of operations. Around 500 police trainees from the NCRPO participated in the exercise which aimed to test the health and safety protocols in the rail service. The protocols include reduced passenger capacity from the previous 1,600 to only 160, physical distancing, safety protocols, and information campaign. According to the Department of Transportation, rail services such as the LRT2 will be allowed to resume service once quarantine rules in Metro Manila have been eased into a general community quarantine. In other news, some 7,500 returning overseas Filipino workers who were stuck in quarantine facilities were provided transportation and were already sent back home. Over the weekend, the president gave the Dole and other agencies a week to send home some 24,000 OFWs. Some of the OFWs have been in the country for at least a month and under quarantine for the mandatory period of 14 days. These returning OFWs will also be given up to 20,000 pesos as a start-up or additional capital for the livelihood project under the Balik Pilipinas Balik Hanap Buhay Livelihood Program. OWA Administrator Hans Leo Kakdak said they will start accepting applications for the livelihood program next week. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Marita Moahe. Still to come, the DILG urges local government units to allow returning overseas Filipino workers to undergo home quarantine. A male dialysis patient becomes the first COVID-19 positive case in Basilan. More on this when the PNA Newsroom continues. Mga mommies, pagdating sa COVID-19, dapat hindi tayo kampante. Bagamat hindi nakikita ang sakit na ito, ito ay nakamamatay. At hanggang ngayon, wala pa rin lunas. Kaya protektahan natin ang ating pamilya. Laging maghugas ng kamay, Huwag ahawakan ang mukha at manatili sa bahay para makaiwa sa sakit na ito. Tandaan, buhay ng pamilya natin ang nakasalalay dito. Let's see you in this one. Hi, Gaps! Kamusta? Well, ito dahil sa COVID-19, medyo stress. Oo, oh, okay lang yan, Gaps. Napagdaan ang ko din yan. Ano kayo pwede natin gawin, no? Kung nararamdaman mo na gulong-gulong ka na sa mga naririnig mo, sa mga nababasa mo, mag-post ka muna, saka ka huminga ng malalim. Buti na lang tumawag ka. Iba talaga pag may nangangamusta. A strong body starts with a strong mind. Tama. Let's heal as one. Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tissue at itapon sa basurahan. O galiin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. The Department of the Interior and Local Government advised local government units to let returning OFWs undergo a home quarantine instead of isolating them from their residences. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año said returning OFWs are already negative for COVID-19 based on test results they obtained after undergoing a 14-day mandatory quarantine. He said it would be better if they will be allowed to undergo home quarantine for them to see their families. Meanwhile, the Department of Justice said local officials who impede the return of repatriated OFWs may face prosecution. 
Justice Secretary Bernardo Guevara said President Duterte has already given instructions to all LGUs to accept the returning 24,000 OFWs to their hometowns. He said LGU officials who will continue to defy this directive may be held administratively and criminally liable for violations of the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act. And in our business news, the Philippines has ramped up its capacity to locally produce face masks. DCI Undersecretary Seferino Rodolfo said, Our local supply now reaches 25 million from about 7 million to 8 million combined capacity of Medtex and Yoko Isada. Before the COVID-19 outbreak, the country's only surgical mask producer is the Bataan-based Medtex International Corporation. As the country ramps up its capacity to locally produce much-needed medical supplies, DTI Secretary Ramon Lopez said the government is eyeing to stockpile these products. Lanao del Norte supports the Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa program and has even offered more resettlement areas for returning informal urban settlers. In a Facebook post, Minda Secretary Emmanuel Piñol said Wednesday that Governor Imelda de Maporo and several town mayors in the province assured them that they are ready for the rollout of the pilot project in Kauswagan, Lanao del Norte. Earlier, Kauswagan Mayor Romel Arnado offered to host the first resettlement area for 200 families whose members would engage in organic broiler chicken and vegetable production. Mayor Barry Baguio of Katapagan vowed to host a BPO facility that could employ returning residents while other mayors are still willing to host resettlements with different setups. The Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa program initiated by Senator Christopher Lorenz Bongo aims to balance urban and rural development by refocusing government resources in the countryside. A male patient undergoing dialysis is the first ever positive case of COVID-19 reported in Basilan. More on this and other news from the provinces from Rom Dulfo. Basilan Governor Jim Saliman announced Wednesday the province's first confirmed case of COVID-19. The male patient, who is also undergoing dialysis treatment, is from the municipality of Tipo-Tipo. He was confined at the Zamboanga General Hospital after testing positive in two separate tests. Based on the data from the Ministry of Health, this is the 24th positive case in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Davao Occidental also recorded its COVID-19 case in a health bulletin on Tuesday evening. The 25-year-old female patient was among the stranded residents in Davao City who arrived in Davao Occidental on May 22 through the Balik Provincia program of the government. The patient was working at a public market in Davao City before the declaration of the enhanced community quarantine there. Davao Occidental's first COVID-19 patient was a 65-year-old woman who died early this month. In Zamboanga City, authorities reported three new cases of COVID-19, setting the total number to 145. Mayor Maria Isabel Climaco Salazar, chairperson of the local IATF on COVID-19, said Wednesday that two of the patients were part of a group of 60 inmates who were released from the Zamboanga City Reformatory Center on May 10. The third is an 18-year-old boy from Barangay Baliwasan who was admitted to the Zamboanga City Medical Center on Monday and died on the same day. Contact tracing is ongoing while the area where the patient presided has been placed on lockdown. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dufa. Up next, Cebu City reports a record high number of 16 COVID-19 recoveries in one day. And Panad Stadium in Bacolod City allows holding of non-contact sports activities. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Ang Modified Enhanced Community Quarantine o MECQ ay ang transition phase sa pagitan ng ECQ at GCQ kung saan pansamantalang luluwagan ang ilan sa mga quarantine measures. 
sa patuloy na paglaban sa COVID-19 ang mga minimum health standards tulad ng wastong paghuhugas ng kamay, pagsuot ng face mask at pagpapanatili ng safe physical distancing ay patuloy nating sundin. Sa ilalim ng MECQ, istriktong ipinapatupad ang home quarantine sa lahat, lalo na ang mga below 21 years old at above 60 years old, mayroong immunodeficiency o health risks, mga buntis, at pati na rin ang mga kasama sa bahay ng mga nabanggit. Limitado pa rin ang paggalaw sa pag-access ng mga essential goods at services, pagpasok sa trabaho sa mga pinahihintulutang industriya at iba pang mga aktibidad. Ang mga sumusunod ay ang mga pinapayagang mag-operate Maaari namang mag-operate in full capacity ang mga sumusunod. Pinahihintulutan namang mag-operate in 50% capacity ang mga sumusunod. Mananatiling nakaskeleton workforce o alternative work arrangements ang lahat ng mga tanggapan ng gobyerno at accredited diplomatic missions at international organizations. Ang mga hotels o mga katulad na establishmento ay hindi pa rin pinapayagang mag-operate, maliban sa mga sumusunod. Ang mga public gathering ay ipinagbabawal pa rin tulad ng movie screening, concert, sporting event, at iba pa. Ang residential o face-to-face classes sa lahat ng antas ay patuloy na suspendido. Ang limitadong operasyon sa mga malls at mga pamilihan ay pinahihintulutan habang bawal pa rin ang mga leisure establishments at services. Ang pampublikong transportasyon ay suspendido pa rin at ang pribadong transportasyon tulad ng mga shuttle ng kumpanya at mga personal na sasakyan na ginagamit ng mga authorized persons outside residence ay pinapayagan alinsunod sa mga guidelines ng DOTR. Ang iba pang mga essential at priority public and private construction projects ay pinahihintulutan alinsunod sa construction safety guidelines. Ang mga industriya ang hindi papayagang mag-operate ay ang mga sumusunod. Ang mga probisyon sa ECQ, kabilang ang pagproseso ng mga payroll, rapid pass system, paggamit ng government-owned o hired vehicles at identification cards ay maisa sa katuparan pa rin sa ilalim ng MECQ. Ang pag i tulad ng paglalakad, jogging, pagtakbo o pagbibisikleta ay pinapayagan sa mga lugar sa ilalim ng MECQ. Ang buhay MECQ ay pansamantala lamang. Tandaan na laging sundin ang mga alituntunin sa panahong ito upang ating muling maranasan ang normal na pamumuhay na ating kinagisnan. Stay safe. Stay at home.
The city government of Cebu on Wednesday recorded 164 more patients who have recovered from the COVID-19, bringing the total number of recoveries to 394. Mayor Edgardo Labella said the recoveries listed by the Cebu City Health Department is the highest in a single day since the COVID-19 crisis started in March. Several of the recoveries include 15 from Mambaling, where the lockdown sub-village of Alaska is situated. Labella called on residents to continue cooperating with the city government, health officials, police, and other agencies to prevent a second wave of COVID-19. He also urged them to continue observing health protocols, such as wearing face masks and staying home to prevent further contagion. Meanwhile, at least 110 asymptomatic patients from Barangay Suba were set to be released on Wednesday, along with four others who had tested negative of coronavirus. The CCHD also recorded 21 new COVID-19 positive cases in the city. At least 84 domestic tourists stranded in eastern Visayas since March have returned to their homes after being stranded amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The four buses left Palo Leite Friday last week to Metro Manila and other areas in Luzon, including Daraga, Albay, and Baao, Camarines Norte. The tourists express relief for the trip back home after being stranded in the region due to the enhanced community quarantine or ECQ. The four sweeper buses were used earlier for the Balik Provincia program, with Leyte Province being one of the pilot areas. DOT Region 8 Director Karina Rosa Tiopez said they are pleased to lend aid to the tourists who are the backbone of the tourism industry. She said they are also glad to partner with the LGUs and the regional government offices in continuing public service. Panaad Park and Stadium in Bacolod City has reopened to residents who want to engage in non-contact sports activities. Governor Eugenio Jose Laxon said that since Tuesday, the stadium has been allowing entry to those who want to use its facilities while the province is under general community quarantine. Among the sports allowed in the stadium are badminton, tennis, ping pong, chess, running, jogging, and walking. On the other hand, team sports are prohibited. Although the grandstand has been closed for renovation months before in preparation for the Palarong Pambansa in 2021, its other facilities are available for use by sports enthusiasts. Lakson, however, said the Capital Lagoon and Park, which is also frequented by joggers and runners, remains closed. Negros Occidental and Bacolod City are under GCQ, while non-contact sports are allowed, provided that the minimum health standards such as wearing a face masks are observed. Task Force Bangun Marawi continues to roll out more livelihood kits for residents of Marawi City as they contend with rebuilding their homes amid the COVID-19 pandemic. More on this from Christine Lin Viajante. The dreaded coronavirus disease did not stop the government, particularly the task force Bangun Marawi, from assisting Marawi City residents. A beneficiary of livelihood starter kits expressed gratitude to the Department of Trade and Industry, saying the income that she will earn from the Sari Sari store will help sustain their daily living needs. Maraming salamat. Siyempre, gustong gusto ko makakalim para may pangtulong sa aming pang-araw-araw gusto. Per report from DTI, a total of 38,105 livelihood kits or 76% of its 50,000 target kits had been distributed to IDPs. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, DTI continues the distribution following strict precautionary health measures. In a related development, the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Agrarian Reform Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao recently awarded farm tractors to seven former cooperatives in Marawi City to improve farm productivity. The support was given under the Bangun Marawi Recovery Rehabilitation and Reconstruction Program using the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Fund. Magpapasalamat po ako sa lahat ng nagtulong-tulong sa pagkuha namin ng traktor. Lahat ng farmers namin natutuwa sa pagkita nila sa tulong ng gobyerno sa amin. Yun po ang message ko sa Task Force Bangun Marawi. 
Displaced farmers also continue to benefit from the Food Security Convergence Project of TFBM and its partner agencies. Maraming salamat po sa kanila dahil natulungan kami nilang mga farmers. Lalo na sa mga ibinigay nila sa amin ng mga seeds. Itinanim namin hanggang ngayon. Nag-arvest naman kami. TFBM Chairman and Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development Secretary Eduardo Del Rosario is optimistic that all major projects in the most affected area will be completed by December 2021 after President Rodrigo Roa Duterte approved the release of 3.56 billion budget despite the two-month enhanced community quarantine caused by COVID-19 which stalled all the rehabilitation works in Marawi. For PNA Newsroom, Christine Linviajante of PIA Oligan City Information Center. Here's another look at today's biggest stories. The Philippines and Vietnam reaffirm their commitment to pursue peace and stability in the South China Sea. The DILG urges local government units to allow returning overseas Filipino workers to undergo home quarantine. A male dialysis patient becomes the first COVID-19 positive case in Basilan. And Cebu City reports a record high number of 16 COVID-19 recoveries in one day. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check out more news content, check our webpage or head on to the Philippines News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day.